your opinions and first uh, let's talk about you and who you are and what it is you do in product. Yeah, my name is Vlad and I'm 10 years in product management. Uh, before that I was software engineer and believe me or not I actually decided to move into product because I thought that within my lifetime AI going to replace me as software engineer. Who knew back then that now with generative AI it's going to replace all of us and no job are safe. Uh, I really enjoy being product manager. That was pivotal in my career. As an engineer you can do something, but as a product manager you can do so much more. And I started with product marketing, organic acquisition, paid advertisement, chatbots, platforms, dev tools, self-driving cars. And at some point, they landed into machine learning, and I don't want to change. Uh, <laughs> okay. Hi, Vlad. I'm so excited to be interviewing you today. You've been in product for years now, and you're a head of machine learning and a director of product. Um, and you have so many interesting opinions about AI and how it disrupts a product building. So I'm really looking forward to ask you about um, AI and product today. Uh, before I do that, uh, could you tell us a little bit more about yourself and you know what you've been up to? Yeah, I like that you say product building, not product management. Yes. Uh, you know, when you say that you're a product manager, people often think that you manage something, but you're actually building. That's actually one of the reasons that I became a product manager or product mm -hmm. builder. I started my career as a software engineer. I was actually coding since age of 12 years and I, around 10 years ago I started to be worried about AI and that within my lifetime AI will take my job and I need to secure it and do something bigger, more important and I always like to uh, build products. I used to have my own company back in Ukraine so I was certain I need to move into product management so then I can A, build more things but B, AI won't take away your my job. job yeah and I will still be able to do something and imagine what now I'm shocked after all these 10 years I am worried that I will take all jobs not only product managers engineers actually everyone and if you consider robotics even people who uh, are on cash registry coffee makers everyone right. and there is plumbers imagine well, that there's a question of like some jobs should they exist for people to do and you know potentially it would give them more time to be more creative and do something they really want to do uh, but that's you know the topic. That, it's, it's okay like if there is room for humans to do job what they like to do like some people actually like to work on wood yes build houses do construction sometimes like to make coffee be barista like if if you like to do that there has to be opportunity for a human to be able to express yourself mm -hmm. and go where your passion is so tell us more about today right today you know the the machine is working already like it has started the pandora's box is open we cannot go back like it is what it is right whether it's going to be dystopian or utopian uh that's under a question right now but uh, when you look into product managers and product builders and integration with AI, what would you say um, the advice is how to use AI as product builders in the best way? Incorporating AI in your work, that's a tool. The same way as there was uh, industrial revolution, right? We had some engines that brought into factories and those uh, manufacturers who actually used uh, technology were able to uh, be better and produce faster, higher quality products. Then the same thing happened with electrification, the same thing happened with internet. And you see this globalization happening and now cognification is the new way, the new revolution. They call it uh, the new GPT, new general purpose technology. And you need to adopt this technology in your work. So you shouldn't be scared start using tools like ChatGPT, Anthropic, Gemini, Copilot, just to have conversation, help you to brainstorm and discuss solutions. You can use tools for like DALI for image generation. Um, there are many AI tools now integrated into analytics like Amplitude, Google Analytics, like you get those insights. You don't necessarily need to be data analyst anymore, be they're super efficient in Excel formula or being really amazing writer for your six pagers. Now AI can help you do all those things. Um, 
So I would say one thing, first thing, start to do it by yourself just to realize the potential and what can be done. The second thing, start to build GPTs yourself for your team and for your maybe even customers mm -hmm. that help you uh, automate some of their pain points, some of their routine processes, something that um, can be delegated as you think that if this is something you can delegate to an intern you perhaps can delegate it to AI as well and after you have some of this basic understanding move on start incorporating AI into your products uh, you will have some intuition around what is possible what is not and stay on top of, um, of all the uh, news you know um, it, there are many YouTube channels uh, that are talking about AI everyone who is currently employed should stay on top with technology and try to incorporate it into your job as much as possible so you always remain on top of the curve and uh, people who wants to enter uh, market job market they need to work maybe several times harder because now they will compete not only against other humans but also against AI. I'm really worried about a new generation of product builders. Uh, if um, you just decided to start your career and you know uh, you want to move into tech, uh, it will be hard. It will be hard for everyone, for product managers, for data analysts, for engineers, for everyone. Entry level jobs, that entry level intellectual jobs will be most likely delegated to AI. Imagine a new startup, you have a technical founder who actually writes all the software uh, themselves and they have option, hire one more engineer to code more or hire a product manager who will now go and talk to customers, analyze what the features are needed, uh, plan roadmaps. Most likely they will uh, use AI for this you can use AI these days to just summarize all the customer feedbacks, categorize them, prioritize them, and even generate user stories for yourself to work on. Um, for example, here, uh, you know, like the entire industry currently is focused on helping engineers to uh, be more efficient. They right. introduce this co-pilot, no code tools, and also no human developer tools. So there is this company called Build AI. So what they do, they, they, they have a software that generates mobile apps or based on your request. They have hundreds of different uh, components in their library that can generate different apps like, uh, like Google search, like, uh, um, like Airbnb, like Messenger. So they have a lot of predefined templates, but of course you want your app to be slightly different. Maybe you have an app for events, maybe for gardening. So what they do, they actually use human engineers to do the final, implement the final mile of, of this uh, product, but they automated product manager. They actually have AI that helps to gather your requirements, create those user stories, send to engineers, and uh, check on the progress. They have sprints, they do weekly check-ins, so with well, AI. On one hand, like that's the part of uh, the job that is not so interesting because it's like routinely, right? That's uh, true. Building the, deciding what features go and what, which features don't is more interesting for them. So it's interesting because uh, their AI also does this, <laughs> but you know what? They also have product managers mm -hmm. who build this product manager AI. Right. So uh, the same, the same thing happens with engineers, right? Like, uh, first we had like low-level engineers who coded in zeros and ones on those cards, you know, they poked holes, then they created assembler, machine codes, then some languages and higher, higher level languages. So we always had engineers who built a new level of abstraction. And now new abstraction is actually cognition. And I would think that product managers will do the same. We will be helping building those AI tools for us and for all the people who work with us in our teams. Mm -hmm. And we go higher level, higher level, more and more abstraction. You have new innovations every week and you have to keep up with the news. Um, tell us what do you see you know, for future? Yeah, so uh, very good question. Uh, thank you. Like, I am one of those who are fanatic, lunatic optimist of AI and you know, some people say that we'll have AGI in 10, 30 years. Some people say it's going to be as fast as three years. I think the truth is somewhere in between. I think that in about 10 years, 
uh, it will be a really meaningful uh, progress on AGI, even if we want to achieve everything. But we should not underestimate how fast this uh, area and this technology is evolving. So far, it is the fastest evolving technology. Just think about this. 5,000 years ago, we invented wheel. Only 5,000 years ago. You might think that this is a lot of time, but 90% of technology we are using today was invented only within the last 100 years. And there is this uh, theory of accelerated innovation that tells us that as we find a new and new innovation, we trigger a new cascade of new smaller innovation across the board. So the previous 30 years will look nothing like the next 30 years. And our brain is just not wired to understand how big and drastic those changes will be. Ubiquitous penetration across every tool we use, like this camera, this phone, even this page actually has a clicker, so we can actually click and connect. Mm. Uh, do you want to connect? Yeah, let's, let's connect. connect. You see? Okay. You didn't click. Oh yeah, you see yeah, it's green screen. Okay. So, Great. so, and this is only this is only. 2024. Right. Two years, you won't recognize this world. So you think there's going to be completely new jobs in two years? Absolutely. So uh, at our company, we already have prompt engineer as a role that did not exist uh, two years ago. And now we have a team of four prompt engineers. Wow. Who have a weird mix of uh, skills. You know, they're good at writing, they're good at technology, and they're good at data science. That makes you a good prompt engineer. Uh, we don't have any more a big uh, data labeling team. We used to have a huge team of data annotation. Mm -hmm. uh, we still have um, around 100 people, other folks. They moved into other departments. They do other jobs. So uh, our phone died, uh, and therefore <laughs> the camera died, and we already have everyone busy here. So we need to finish, should right. we? Yeah, give us as the last uh, kind of advice. Spend time not only at your work, uh, try to build other things, try to build your community, try to build maybe products for your passion and spend some time outdoors. Uh, you have to start practicing because if AI will do 50% of your job, you will need to find other ways how to enjoy this <laughs> life. Thank you. Thank you for having me today. Thank you so much, Vlad.